I kind of envisaged that I would be going back to doing a normal job once I left Depeche. If he didn't like it, then I was going to get a day job. And Vince called up and asked if he could pop by and play me something. I said, yeah, sure thing. And he came by and he played it to me. And I think I was just a bit thrown by it. So I just thought, well, that's it then. That's, you know, he doesn't like it, obviously. He's not jumping up and down or anything, so I'll go home. And then um, Rod Buckle, uh, the publisher, came in with um, a couple of other guys who were the head of the publishing company. And they listened to the demo and they said, oh, this is really, really good. Then Daniel kind of gave it a second listen. I can remember all that really quite vividly. He just caught up and said, uh, Daniel loves it, thinks we should record it. And that was it. You know, it's like, OK, we should record it. This was all new ground for Alison. You know, she'd never been signed to a, a serious record company, if you like. It went in the charts at 198. Now, today, you know, you're just people who just cry and hang themselves, you know. It's like then, 198. 198 out of, you know, all the records that are released. What an incredible thing that was, you know. And to have this record go up, you know, you get the record company call you and it's gone up 20 places this week, it's gone up 30 places this week, and it's like, we're in the top 100. Lucky you now, top 100. Sometimes when I think of her name, when it's only a game, and I need you, listen to the words that you say. I see you. All I needed was the love you gave. All I needed for.